Today we're going to be seeing how you can build a vSwitch case component. It's going to mirror the default JavaScript switch case as much as possible. So you can see here we have the vSwitch component and the case is going to be size. If it's a big one, it's going to render this big template. Small is going to render small and default is going to render default. And you can see I just have some buttons up here to toggle that one very easily. If we jump down here and look at our setup function, it's going to be very simple. We just have the size, which is a ref, and then we're returning the size in here. We have to find this vSwitch component, which hasn't actually been created. So of course we're getting that error here, but this is going to be the goal of what we're building. Uh, two years ago, I built something very similar for Vue 2 called vSwitch case. It was actually a directive based approach as opposed to a component based approach. And this had a number of problems and complexities, especially relating to default or dynamic switches. So I'm going to make this again for Vue 3, but we are going to use a component based approach instead. And this is going to leverage Vue's slot system much more effectively and solve a lot of those edge cases. So let's go ahead and get started. At the moment I have nothing rendering at all because well, I haven't built the component. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to do is export something. So I'm going to export a const v switch, and that's just going to be equal to a defined component. Of course, we are using TypeScript here because TypeScript is obviously a good thing to use, especially when you're building a library like this so people will get better recommendations. We're also going to go ahead and import h for our render functions as well as computed as well. And what you need to remember one rule here. Firstly, I'm going to create my setup function and setup functions when rendering things must return something to this signature. It has to return a function and that's going to return a render function. So let's go ahead and see how this one might work. I'm going to grab out the props and the slots in here and we are going to have a single prop and that's going to be that case prop. Let's just go ahead and define that one really quickly. It can either be a string or a number exactly the same as regular JavaScript. You can't use an object, for example, inside of here. This much must be a primitive. So we're just going to go with string and number for now. Let's go ahead and just make something render so we can see everything working and we have to match up with this signature. So I'm going to return a H function in here and let's just go ahead and re return a H1 and just say something just to see if this is working. If we save it off and refresh the page, everything is working. We have something exactly what you would expect. The next thing we're going to do is see if we can render that default slot. Let's go ahead and try that one out. Again, this is also very simple. What we need to do is just return slots.default in here, save this one off and we're going to get default. That is working correctly as well. We are going to have a problem here. At the moment, we're going to ret return the exact same node every single time, and this needs to be dynamic. It needs to be based or computed based on the prop.case type. So what we're going to do is transform this to use a computed property. I'm going to make this one computed. So let's go ahead and return a new function in here that's computed. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the value. Just to verify this is still working, I'm going to return h of let's say h2, and then just pass in some junk data to see if this one is going to work. And this still matches up to what we have up here. We are returning a function, which is ultimately going to return the value of the computed property, which is going to be this render function inside of here. If we save this one off, it is still working. We are getting everything we expected. Now that we make this computed, we can go ahead and have some dynamic behavior in here, depending on the props. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we go and do that, we're going to have a look at the slots and see what's going on in there. And we're going to get three values in here. We're going to get small, we're going to get uh, big, and we're going to get default. And that's going to be our three render functions we are working with. If we do have a valid render function to render, so we're going to say if the props or case is either big or small, we're going to go ahead and return that one. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to see if props.case is defined. And if it is, we're also going to see if slots props.case is defined. And if this is valid, we're going to go ahead and return that one. So we're just going to say return h and pass in our slot. So slots props.case. With a bit of luck, this is going to work. Let's save it off and see what happens. And we are getting small exactly what we expected. The reason we expected this to be small is if I come down here, we can see the default value is going to be small. And if we change to big, that's going to work as well. So we've made some good progress. The next thing we need to do is click on invalid and we are going to get nothing in here. Uh, we should be rendering the default slot. So let's go ahead and do that. The next thing I'm going to do is just do another check down here. We're going to see, uh, obviously if this is not true, we're going to fall through to this case here. So I'm just going to see if props or rather slots.default is defined. And if it is, we're just going to go ahead and return that slots.default. With a bit of luck, this is going to work as well. So we have big, we have small, and we do have default. Finally, we need to cover the last case where the, the user doesn't actually define this default slot. Let's comment this out and see what happens. And we are going to get a warning if we click on it invalid, it's going to give us a, a warning or apparently not, but we should probably handle this a bit more gracefully anyway. So what we're going to do is just do a check in here. And if neither of these is true, we're going to go ahead and return something by default. In this case, I'm just going to return a div. And I think this is going to be a much cleaner way to handle it. And everything is now working correctly or so it seems. 
What I'm going to do is show you why we needed to do this now. If I delete this function out here and save it off, it's probably not going to work anymore. You can see we're getting all these errors. It's saying we should not return a V node directly. We do indeed need to match this correct case using the function, and that's going to make everything work. The last thing I'd like to do is make sure this is working with dynamic slots as well. That was one of the problems I had with my original V switch case directive. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to change how this one works a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this default slot and I'm just going to replace these templates here. We're also going to replace this case. I'm going to make this on a number and we're going to have a number of random numbers. So let's go ahead and update this one as well. It's going to change the number to be some other random number and I'm just going to say change in here. We're going to have a list of numbers we're going to render. Let's go ahead and create those ones now. I'm going to create a new list of numbers in here and we're just going to say one, two, three, four, five and I'm going to go ahead and return those. We're also going to have the case that we're matching on, so I'm going to say const number. It's going to be a ref, and we're just going to make that one by uh, one for now, and return number in here. Finally, we need some way to change the numbers here, so I'm going to create a new one called change number, and we're just going to randomly change to a number between one and five. So let's go ahead and quickly write that one out as well. All we need to do in here is get a random number between one and five, so I'm going to call that one rand. It's just going to be math.seal because we're going to be rounding up. We're going to use math.random to get a random number between zero and one. Then we're going to multiply it by five and that's going to give us random number between one and five. Finally, I'm going to say number.value is equal to rand and get our random number. And we need to change that one to return as well. If we've done everything correctly here, we can hopefully see something different. Let's save it off and we're going to get our random number up there. Just to verify this is working, let's go ahead and actually render that number. So I'm just going to render the number up here. We're just going to say our number. And at the moment is going to be one. And if I change it, we're going to get three, four, five, and that's working correctly. The next thing we need to do is implement the, the slots. So we're going to do, again, use template here. And it turns out you can actually use V4 on template as well. So we're going to say V4 num in numbers and loop over each of those numbers. I'll close the template off and we're just going to render the number in here to see if it's working. And now we need to say our dynamic slot. What you might try and do is something like this, but this is not going to work. It's not going to figure out to interpolate that number. What we need to do is use the vSlot directive here and pass in our slot using the square brackets. And this is going to give us that dynamic uh, value. Let's go ahead now and try this one out. If we save it off, head back here. We are getting three here or one. It's matching up to the correct case. And if we continue changing this, everything is working as you would expect. We're entering the same number twice, once up here and then once down here. To make it a little bit clear, I'm just going to say number here, save it off and everything is now working. Let's also make sure the default case is working in here. We just need to make sure we can change it to a number that's outside our limits. So I'm going to say number is equal to 10. And this is going to say change to 10. And this should give us our default case. Let's try it out. It is working, we are getting the default case. So everything is now working exactly as you would expect. And we can see how simple this actually was with our views slots. It was actually only a few lines of code. We now have a very powerful construct we can use to express complicated switch cases in our components. The next step here would obviously to make this uh, bundle this and make it distributable on NPM. It's actually a fairly involved task nowadays. There's at least three, if not four modules you need to target. You need to have your bundle for your browser, your Node.js bundle, as well as your ESM bundler bundle. Uh, that's something we'll talk about in a separate video. I think this is enough for now. So I'll see you in the next video where we're going to figure out how we can bundle this and distribute it on NPM.